Hello, welcome to my video about setting up webhooks in Airtable, the manual way. So today is going to be part one of a part two series, part two, of a two part series, um, talking about how we can send webhooks to Zapier um, and why this is, uh, why you might want to do this. So the first video today, uh, we're going to set up a uh, manual webhooks. So let's say you've got a workflow and you want to send something to Zapier manually. You want to just like check a box and send it to Zapier. Um, we might want to send that to, to Slack or, or something like that. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. In the next part of the video, or the next, the second part, we're going to be uh, looking at how we can do that automatically. So uh, if you like this content, like, subscribe, all the rest, you know the drill. And let's jump, let's hop into it. So um, as you can see, I have got um, uh, my Airtable. Now, actually, I'm going to show you a really cool tool, um, which is called Mockaroo. So we'll go to Mockaroo, and I really like Mockaroo because it just gives you like a bunch of data to use that's random, um, and, and that can be quite helpful here. Uh, so let's just go in, and we can see here we've got Carmake, so that's fine. Uh, and what else have we got? Favourite animal, maybe? I don't know. Uh, animal, yeah. Okay, cool. Favourite animal. And uh, we're just going to download that data. It's amazing. It's really cool. And it just gives you an immediate um, base to work with. I use it a lot. Because um, uh, often when you're building... Um, um, oh. Yeah, often when you're building your tables, you, you kind of need data to work with, which is why I've, I always find um, using Mockery is something like really, really nice. As you can see here, we've got the uh, the, the different data in here. And th as you can see also, this is where I got my, my gender from last time, um, with everybody it being um, all the different genders. Now, um, We've got first name, last name. We're going to use Carmate today, so I'm not going to talk about gender anymore. Um, and favorite animal. Yeah, we'll keep favorite animal in there. So you've got Carmate and favorite animal. Maybe we don't need IDs. I'm going to say, I'm going to call this full name, right? So as you can see, I'm just going to call this full name. And by doing this, I can concatenate with a formula, the first name and the last name. First name and space and last name. All right, so here we've got all of these uh, users. We've got the email, everything else. And now let's say uh, we want to add a, well, let, let's say we want to add a button, right? When we want to do something, we want to send some data to Zapier and we actually want to, to kind of send all of this data here. So Leroy Challenger with the email and the car make and the favorite animal. So we can send all that to Zapier. So the first thing you want to do is obviously, if you don't know about Zapier, <laughs> watch some of my other videos. Uh, but the next thing you want to do after you find out about Zapier is sign up for an account or open your account and start creating a Zap, right? As I have done here. So I started to create a Zap and we're going to choose the webhook. Okay, so we've got the webhook and we're going to choose the option to catch a hook <clears throat> so um in this case that's basically all you want to do is start start off the process catch the hook now what zapier does is it gives us a lovely um url here which we can copy and we can bring in and start to use in our workflow so the next uh next part of this would be call it a button um or Call it a button, <laughs> uh, and uh, for now anyway, and then uh, use button, and we can see here that that gives us a lovely little button, and what we can do here is bring in the URL formula, now I'm just going to do that on its own, for now, and we can see that opens the URL, we can say call it Zapier, and I, I don't like this one, I like this version of the button, and we can just say, or 
Did I let's call it zap it. Zap it. All right, so we're zapping it. Cool. So when I click this button, it'll open that URL. Now, what will happen um, when I click this now, which I will do and show you, is very little information will be sent to Zapier. In fact, no information will be sent to Zapier, but something will be sent to Zapier, which is awesome. As you can see, uh, that's, that's triggered something. And now when I click continue, this will have sent us some data. So you can see it did send us some data, but it didn't send as much information and um, it wasn't that useful. So what you can do is actually um, send in some uh, URL string parameters or query string parameters as they're called. Um, and the way we do that is very similar to how I created the formula. Um, if you remember very back at the start of this video, I created a little formula. formula and um, it brought the full name and the first name to, or the first name and the last name together to create the full name. We're going to do something very similar here. Now, let's try it out. Right? So um, I'm going to bring this in here and then what we're going to do is we're going to build up our U URL string. So we're going to say and full name. Uh, you, uh, you probably want to keep the um, the the URL together as much as possible. Um, I'm going to show you something that, like, uh, where I'm going to intentionally break something, and that's okay. Uh, so I'm going to make the full name, and I'm going to bring in the full name here. So what we can see is here we're building our query string, and um, what we can say is we've got and full name, but then we want to say and equals. Oh no, we want to say haha <laughs> and. Full name equals full name, right? And that, as um, as we will see, he he he, and an and in there, um, is is going to um send Zapier the the name. Um, but you can see here it didn't work, and the reason it didn't work is because it's got um it a couple of couple of reasons is one um, I forgot something very important that uh. I just shouldn't have forgotten. No, it's a terrible, uh, terrible thing. Is at the very start of your URL string, <laughs> you need a question mark. All right, if you don't have a question mark, it's not going to work. Now, <laughs> this will work, but, but probably be a little bit broken, which is okay too. Um, I find this far too funny for what it, for the content that I'm creating here. Um, but here we go. Right, great. So we've got full name and we brought in Leroy Challenger, right? As you can see, that's that's kind of worked properly. So now we can say um, more more information about them, right? So we create this this logic string, we build that up, right? So we bring it all in and we bring it into um, uh, our, our URL string into inverted commas, and then we remember to use the and, and then the question mark, and then another and, but we don't need a question mark at this uh, at this point, at this juncture, right? All we need is an, another and. So we see and, and, inverted commas, and, and then we want to bring an email, and then another and, ampersand, and then we say email. And we can see that now we're really starting to build up our URL string. And we, we send that across. You can see it will bro brought over this person. But now, considering we, we just added that element to um, to the URL string, well, I've messed up, haven't I? I've gone and said, uh, I've, I've basically not put an equals in here. right? So there's tons of ways you can mess this up. Um, and, and what we're trying to do here is just learn all the like, the gotchas, right? And I'm trying to make this look like I'm doing it on purpose. Uh, I hope I'm succeeding. So what we really need to do is make email equals, right? And again, um, we'll send a Nalani, Nalani cap once it saves. That's odd, it doesn't usually take this long to save. Come on, Airtable. Okay, so uh, let's just check that that's saved. And... Good. Okay, so now Annie Cap, and um, so we bring her through, and finally we will be able to see that because we added that um, equals, we, we were able to split out full name and email, right? Um, typically, 
we want to make it as uniform as possible. So as you can see, I've, I've created one with the capital letters and one with small letters. It doesn't really matter, but just for the sake of it, like you probably want to keep everything with the same type of case casing structure. In this case, I'm using uh, it's called snake case, and snake case basically means it's uh, it's an underscore between the the different uh, words, right? So as you can see, full name, not full fame, full name. Uh, we've got full underscore name, and that's snake case. If you want to learn about camel case, it's basically very similar, except instead of the underscore, we just capitalize the second and subsequent words, but we're not doing that today. Okay, so let's add one final thing for good measure, and that's the car make, right? What car did they buy or what car were they interested in? Um, and we, we do that in the exact same way. Now, given that we've built this all, it looks, it, it's, the structure has been implemented, a really easy way to start doing this is going, okay, I'm, I know what I'm doing now. Um, I can just bring everything from each ampersand and then add it in here, right? So I can bring an email because th this means that we know we're doing the right thing. Um, and we say, and car equals, and then we say car, right? So I just copied it and pasted it and then replaced it and that will now bring us in the car. So, Finally, um, we want to click the button, click zap it. It doesn't usually make that noise, that's just me making that noise for fun. Um, and bring it in. You can see here, and we've got car at Volvo. So we've got Jana Simonet, and we've got our email address, and we've got the car. So then we can then um, do whatever we want. Um, I would say, these are a slight notification, that's fine. I uh, send the channel message to Slack. So I'll do this one. And uh, let's call it random because that's what it is. Okay, and we can just bring in all of that stuff. So we can say, uh, we have a new customer. Um, and we can then bring in all of that information, right? So name. Uh, car and email. Okay, and we can do a bunch more stuff. Um, let's call it that bot, and we can give it an icon. Uh, let's make it a parade symbol because it's the one I use the most. I'm usually begging for things. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not really begging for things. I'm just uh, normally trying to say thanks to people. Uh, so hopefully that's come in to our random. And as you can see, it has got the pre icon. We have a new customer name, car, Volvo, uh, email. And we've got sent via the Slack. So that is a way, hopefully, um, hopefully you've you've uh, followed along with this. If you have, uh, then great. Um, if uh, not, um, I recommend uh, playing it again, but on zero point five speed. Um, <laughs> and I hope that you join us uh, for the second part, where I'm going to show you how to do these things automatically. So today I did everything manually with this button, but what we're going to do is do it automatically. And I'll explain the reasons for that in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I really appreciate your attention. If this is useful, that's excellent. And um, if you find it funny, that's excellent um, and, and, and hopefully intentional. Um, if you uh, just uh, have a great day, uh, I'm not going to ask anything of you. Just. Just be awesome and automate all your work and then go to the park or buy a dog or do something with that extra time that you saved. That would be good. That would make me happy and hopefully it would make you happy. Uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.